Hi, thanks for tuning in. I'm Taylor, Dr. Taylor Burroughs, and you're probably here because you're curious about my ideal life and relationship system. So if you are more interested in going into depth into that topic, I have an ebook and you can find the link below. But today's topic is a tricky one and it comes up a lot in already established couples and they find their way to me in order to try to refine their relationship and improve it because they're inching their way to a crossroads and they don't really want to give up but they know what they're doing is not quite working or not working well enough for them and they really want to try to deconstruct how their relationship was formed and create new systems in order to have a healthier dynamic in the home. And this also goes for newly developing relationships or someone who is curious about how to form that ideal relationship when the time is right. So this is all about single income or dual income earning couples. It's a toughie, but I've broken it down into a diagram. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that diagram up here on a, a screen and screen display today, but I will definitely talk more about it and hopefully come up with a really nice and pretty diagram for you so that it makes it a little bit easier. But it's five parts. Basically, there are two healthy ways of establishing that ideal relationship, and there are three unhealthy ways that usually are quite common. So let's go through the unhealthy ways first. In regards to the, the dual earning income, a lot of times what happens when it's unhealthy is they've got this 50-50 system. You know, it's the egalitarian system. And it's not healthy because it's actually an issue of control. It's just that both people have equal control in in a way that they're caught in a power struggle. I've talked about the power struggle before, but I think it's interesting to break it down in this way. Because the reason why that the single earning income is also unhealthy is because of control. So in a single earning income relationship or household, you'll see either the man has control and the woman is complacent or the opposite. The woman has control and she is earning all the income and the man is complacent. And so it's still about control, but in regards to the dual earning couple where they're doing this 50-50 equal split, they're not really sharing the control, they're not really sharing the responsibilities, they're not really clarifying expectations, it's not like they're um, in a peaceful existence, it's an actually, actually, it's a, it's a contentious existence, right? Because they're measuring everything. They're measuring every dish that's washed. They're measuring every penny that's spent and everything is tit for tat. So it's not at all something that you want if you want a harmonious, happy, respectful relationship that is serene and everyone is happy. This is going to be a constant battle. So on the flip side, the two healthy versions of a relationship dynamic from the single earning income, it's going to be the man having the head of household designation where he's taking care of most of the provisioning in regards to finances and the woman is taking over more of the household responsibilities, right? So that's definitely a healthy dynamic. If we were to invert that where the woman was earning and the man wasn't, it's not that it isn't possible that it would happen, but it's going to have a distorted impact on the sexual polarity of the relationship. So if you're a typical heterosexual monogamous couple and the woman is the single earning person and the man is stay at home, that dynamic is basically just going to be inverted from a more typical, traditional, masculine man, feminine woman scenario. Now, that's not to say that a masculine man doesn't have feminine elements. There is a minority of feminine elements that includes 
all the emotional intelligence and the compassion and kindness and the more subtleties of being a, a healthy, developed, and mature masculine man. And the opposite is true for the woman. But when the relationship is in, in reverse and the woman is the masculine one, predominantly, and the man is the feminine one, predominantly, it's a very different picture. Let's just put it like that. If that's what you're seeking and that's what you're looking for, then that's the dynamic that you should shoot for. However, the other healthy scenario that I would recommend if you are a dual earning household, and, and that's quite common and totally understandable uh, and acceptable. But what you have to do is not this 50-50 split thing. It's a uh, a mutual sort of blend of roles. So you have to look at it as like a balance. So the person, if you're both earning money, whether that's inside the home or outside the home, if you both are bringing in a fair share of the money for the, for the, for the couple, for the household, for the family, then what you should do is split up responsibilities so that one of you takes the majority of the financial uh, role and the minority of the household role, and then the opposite for the other person. And so generally speaking, again, for the same reasons I just described, it's going to be more conducive to a healthy sexual polarity for a heterosexual monogamous couple if the man is going to take the lead in the primary role of protection, provisioning, and creating those principles that the family system is based on, right? He has to direct and captain the ship, uh, whereas the woman is going to be leading in a different way. So she's going to have more of a humble leadership role. And if she has more of a, of a prominent role in the housekeeping and the child care and all of that stuff, then she's going to have a more uh, secondary role in all the other things. But that doesn't mean that she doesn't have a role in those things and vice versa. When I see someone in a relationship where the man doesn't touch anything in the house or doesn't do anything with the kids, and the woman doesn't have anything to do with any of the other aspects, then that's not really healthy or functioning effectively either. So you have to understand that it's not a, a, an either-or dichotomy. It's just a matter of having a, more of a fluidity about it, and it should be based on your skill sets as well. Uh, so if you're really good at finances, then take a bigger role in finances as the woman in the relationship. And if the man is really good at cooking, then the man should take a, a, a bigger role in the cooking than expected. Um, and that's totally fine. But one of the things that I think is really important that I have to reiterate often with my clients is child care is not just a woman's thing. Parenting and fathering is ex extremely essential for your children, especially if you have boys growing into young men. But ultimately, you have to understand that you are you're basically infusing your family with the morals and the principles and the ideals that are really important to you. Your mission is going to get translated. <laughs> That's not the word I'm thinking of. I think it's like it's going to be passed on to your children, right? So you have to be the one to reinforce those concepts, those principles, the, the morality, and your wife as well. The woman is also going to be adopting and integrating those into her disciplinary system and just the way that she parents and guides her children as well. But it's so important that you don't get passive when you're home. Like if you're working out of the home, if you have an office or whatever the case may be, don't just feel like you're off when you come home. That's another role and you have to balance your energy and your time in order to make sure that you can cover all the bases as well. And same for women, you know, when it comes to, to house, household chores and if you're earning money and if you're, you know, doing other things, if you have other responsibilities and taking care of maybe supporting your, your man or your husband, then that's a lot on your plate too. So make sure that you're doing what you can so that you're not burning the candle at both ends and you are giving the best of yourself to your partner first and foremost.
So I think that covers it for today. I will try to get more in depth for you and perhaps have a lovely little diagram for you to digest. So thanks for tuning in. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel and look at the notes below. You'll have a lot of links that you can see more of me on social media and reach out to me on um, my website or you can request a 15 minute discovery call or buy my ebook. So talk to you soon. Ciao.